I mean, yeah, so I think police actually allow gang violence to run rampant so they can have a scapegoat to justify gentrification. Allow? Yep. Because that's the piece that was a little jarring. There were no lies in this paper, but you have to kind of consider the nuance. You really think it's just as simple as the police allow gang violence? As in some like Illuminati level conspiracy? Yeah. If I'm being stabbed and someone across the block calls the police and, and the police don't arrive till 10 minutes later when they're right down the block, it kind of tells me something about their priorities and my safety not being one of them, you know? I mean, it'll take 10 minutes depending on who made the phone call, right? That's the piece. They won't come for Kiki, but they'll come for Chelsea. As usual, you don't lie, sir. When the neighborhood starts to evolve. Devolve. Oh, I mean, <laughs> deep, right? Because the police don't protect bodies, they protect property, that's all it is. So as long as your property value is high enough, then they'll come save you, because they want you to keep paying those taxes and paying that high rent. But if they know that you with Section 8 and you're only paying $100 a month, and then it's like, oh, well, that guy doesn't really need much saving anyway. He's just another mouth for the government to feed, really. And also, when you have people desperate enough and scared enough of gang violence, people start to see gentrification as a good thing. Exactly. Gentrification is literally the displacement of the locals because they can no longer afford those new things that are being brought. Why can't they just do those things without having to displace an entire community? It's like right. they bring in all those things, we enjoy it for like a year or two, and then they raise the rent, and then next thing you know, you can't afford to live in your own neighborhood. I refuse to go. Like, that's why I'm like, we gotta buy things in our community and maybe pool our resources, find some different avenue to ownership. But like, folks are not gonna chase me out of my city. Like, I was born and raised in Queens. I ain't going nowhere. But at this point, right, it can't continue. Like, the gang violence can't continue, but the like monolithic eating choices can't continue either. Cause like, I like food and I don't like gangs, but I'm a little tired of beef patties. Facts. Hey, I'm uh, thinking of going to Sweet Green. You guys want anything? All right, actually, yeah, give me a kale salad, no croutons, unless they have gluten-free croutons. Give me uh, the vegan avocado dressing, and I guess a bottle of water. Thanks. I'll take chips and guac. Chips and guac? Cool, sweet, sounds good. And that's another thing, decolonize avocados, please. 250 for one avocado? Ridiculous. Do you know what though, actually see that? Like, I don't mind just like a little gentrification. Just like a, a, just a little, a little bit. You know, not, you know what, not even gentrification, bougification, <laughs> right? Like you figure, woke black people, African art on the wall, Thai restaurant up the block, right? right. Once I see a white girl jogging with yoga pants and yeah. dreads, that, no. that's, that's where I draw the line. Unacceptable. Yeah. Unacceptable. Yeah.